<laughs> and I, I was impressed. One of the things that I was also impressed by the fact that in Peru they're using a lot of the, a lot of the, the retail stores are carrying products, uh, fresh meat, vacuum packaged, and I was like, really? wow. I think yeah, I was, uh, I was one of the advanced. things. <laughs> it's pretty advanced, and 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 well, I, I was shocked because they, they either have uh, the map, uh, modify atmosphere packaging, mm. or vacuum package. But a lot of the stuff they get, they get the a lot of the CAB stuff, uh, very good stuff down there, and they portion it, uh, and then they they will just sell it in 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 steaks or but but fresh. And vacuum package, and I think that's one of the things that I, I was able to see. And like, wow, they just by doing that very small thing, they're optimizing the chef life because they don't they don't having to aerobically display the products. They're just only in the in the in the cool in the cooler with with uh, I mean just that that anaer- anaerobic packaging. And and I think that's I, that's a good thing. So well, I, I wonder. Um, I I think we have a lot to learn from those folks we we need to go back and talk with the retailers who made that decision because um i mean there's many virtues for selling vacuum packaged uh, product at the retail case in the fresh uh, in the in the fresh state um for those out there listening who are less familiar with the retail display um we 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 just we tend to display meat in a in a uh, oxygen permeable membrane and so traditional foam trays with that overwrap that that still allows for oxygen to permeate through nothing else of course but oxygen to permeate through and so we get that nice bright cherry red color on the beef and and kind of a lighter color on the pork and things um whereas if you pack if you vacuum package products you're going to have a bit of a darker color to it and it's not going to look what maybe the traditional U.S. or Canadian retail um, customer is expecting. They're expecting that brighter cherry red color. And, and through my travels in Europe, um, uh, I, I too have noticed uh, quite a bit of product, fresh product in vacuum packaging. And we got to think too about the uh, big interest in um, uh, food waste and, and product sustainability. sustainability yeah. yeah. That, the vacuum packaging has a lot of benefits. Um, the product's going to last longer. The, the quality is going to be maintained longer, but it does take a lot of education yeah. to, on, the, on, the, on the sales side to educate the consumer on why, why things look so <laughs> different. So I, I, I'd yeah. be curious to go and visit with those folks to see um, how, how do they teach their consumers? Well, that's this? funny. That's funny because uh, early on, on the, on the on the podcast, I mean, uh, I interviewed Dr. Bakit. He's in uh, University of Otago in New Zealand, and uh, he, uh, towards the end, I, I asked him about that, and he took him. He was saying like he took a lot of work uh, between academia, uh, government to just promote the. I mean, just vacuum packaged meat, uh, educating the consumer like why is it that it's better for everyone selling in the form of vacuum, vacuum packaging. And, and we took him a while, but they understood. He, he said probably six, seven years or something. I can, can remember, but it wasn't, it was a long process, but they understood the importance of doing that for the impact on food waste. And they can pretty much reduce at zero or close to zero. I mean, there's, there's a lot of considerations too. And I'm not telling any retailers that are out there listening right now to just flip the switch on and go just straight uh, portioned vacuum packaging because you do need the specialized equipment. It's not that much more advanced than the overwrap equipment that's in the back of most re- uh, retail stores. Um, and and there is the consideration of, do we continue to cut meat in the back room at the retail store? Which I think are there's a lot of virtues for that, having real live meat cutters there. Um, or do we centralize? Do we go to more of a commissary that that does all the portioning, vacuum packaging, and then and then the folks at the stores are, are mostly just opening the boxes? Um, um, I, I still I still strongly believe, very strongly believe in um, having having real live meat cutters at the grocery stores. But I think we could also pretty easily put vacuum packaging in those situ- situations and um, really extend the shelf life. And then the you know the other thing, the other great thing about vacuum packaging of retail product is folks that do want to buy say a lot of steaks at one time um the the phone tray with 
oxygen permeable overwrap, it doesn't freeze very well. And mm -hmm. if you just throw the whole thing into a freezer, especially a home freezer, you end up with freezer burn and just it's it's kind of a mess. Whereas a vacuum package steak or chop, it's already ready to go into the freezer and you pull it out yeah. as you need it. So a lot of virtues there. Thank you.